so this is my first attempt really at doing any sort of review um, I've been doing an Instagram channel for a bit and we're doing and I'm doing a giveaway so I figured I should put up a review of the ad we're giving away build it and stuff and this personal little one is mine but the one I'm giving away is right there I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do uh, I don't really know what build yet but it'll be something like a stitch I'm kind of thinking it's probably gonna end up being a stitched alien on there I, I feel like that would be a really good one to give away because it's a harder one to do and people don't really get them as often um, You know, I I don't think I introduced myself. So, <laughs> uh, I'm Chad, or Marshall, or C. Marshall Go, or that dude who builds coils, whatever you want to refer to me as. Um, oh, I just picked up this noisy cricket. I'll have to do a review on this at some point, too. It... For the price, it is It's a little scary because it's so cheap. Everybody's going to want to want to have one, but it's a unregulated series hybrid top cap dripper in a teeny bitty little form factor. And I'm running a Derringer on it because it's about cloud chasing. No, not really, but <laughs> doing that with some mango boba. But anyways, back to the review. So we have the Wismec Indestructible RDA with the cloud kit. So you're getting lots of airflow, big wide board drip tip. Underneath the wide board drip tip you are also getting extra airflow in the top. So if you run those four open with the three big ones on the sides open, you're getting a lot of airflow. Three-piece design. So you're getting top cap, sleeve, and your deck. Um, the deck is interesting. The deck has Instead of like post holes, like the negatives are just these big C slots, and then the positives are one big oval. And I'm gonna try and do a close up, like down to the table section, and hopefully see those a little bit better. Um, right off the bat, first thing when you open it up, the main thing I'm disappointed with it is. No tools. Like, everyone kind of hates those little blue screwdrivers, right? If you've been vaping for a while, you know what I'm talking about with blue screwdrivers. You do get O-rings and screws and stuff like that, so that's good. But, on the original Indestructible, I'm pretty sure it had all with one type. But on this one, it's got Phillips on the negatives, and then it's got Allen keys on the positives which is just a little awkward, and it's a little bit of an odd size. Um, if you have a Twisted Messes RDA, that one seemed to fit. Um, this cheapo Allen key set that I have, it's got one that fits, but it doesn't have any markings on it. So right off the bat, that's a little weird and But, um, let's try and do an up-close part. I think. I think. So, Ode to Grim Green. Cloud transition. Alright. Up-be-closey time. 
Now, um, here is the little baggy stuff. Now, please give me a little bit of a break. This is the first time ever trying to do this stuff, so it takes it takes me a bit trying to reach around the camera and like show this stuff because I'm looking at this through the viewfinder. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, looks like you're getting three different O-rings. Maybe three of the same O-ring, actually. A um, couple grub screws, a couple Phillips head screws with some big, chunky heads on them. But, like I said before, no tools. Uh, let's see, get the j logo, get the shine off of it so you can see it. I'm doing it again where I'm on the side. j logo, very nice. It's it's not like deep, but it's not shallow either. Like the Jabo part, you can really feel the the ring is a little bit shallower. Then you got three nice size air holes on this side, three nice size air holes on this side. I need a to get one of those calipers so I can figure out what they are. And then I love the fact that it's got like a big hole in the center there I don't know to me it just it always feels like somebody like that he's just like flipping you off <laughs> um, nice big wide bore built-in drip tip um, it does not it is not a 510 so 510s don't fit and then take this guy off on threads, you got a bunch of little air holes, just helping those cooling fans, I think, keep even cooler. You got this little ring that's got air holes on both sides, um, so no single airflow option on the top airflow. I mean, it's on the top, so you don't really have to worry about it like um, leaking when you're running it in single air hole option but yeah, I don't really see how they could have done it anyways. Um, and then it's got these little like blocks here. Let's see. Little blocks here allow for the top cap. When you put that on there, so you can't accidentally like thread it down too deep. The little things actually block it off so that one, it kind of makes a symmetrical gap between the two different gaps rather than them being different, but then it also still allows that airflow to get pulled in. On the top of the top cap, you have the different air holes up here. When you throw that guy on, you can line it up. I mean, you can do all eight air holes open if you want, which, with those all open and the sides both open, I'm like it, it's a crap load of airflow. <laughs> Way more airflow than I tend to like, but probably still not enough airflow for some people. But you can bring it all the way down to one. I mean, you can bring it down to a, just a shred of one, or you can even just close it off entirely if you don't want to use it. And then pull that guy off. I like that there's plenty of room in here plenty of room to do all kinds of different things inside of there and that's what it see you got Philip Philip Allen key I realize that this block isn't big enough to do Philip two Phillips in it but I just kind of wish they'd done Allen keys on these just to make it uniform the whole way across and then you could have thrown in an Allen key Then you got your deck, and this is where those crazy post holes come from, or come in. Uh, the negatives are just big, like, C-slots, and then the positive is a whole, like, oval. Um, when I first saw this, I was really worried that it was going to be, like, a super pain in the butt to build on, but it turns out it's actually not that bad at all, really. Um, you just got to make sure when you're doing your negatives to pull it against the negative side when you're doing your positives to pull it against the wall and lock it down and then snip it all off. I know a lot of people that like to 
cut them exactly how long they want them in the first place and then install them. If you do that, it is going to be a little bit harder, but if you snip after the fact, it's not too bad. It is a little hard to get in there and snip those negative leads off when they're in there, but I don't know, it's not too bad. As long as you have a, a nice pair of snips, and I mean, you don't even need a nice pair of snips. Like I do um, these guys out of all of the pairs of snips I've ever had. These have been my favorite. They're like five bucks from Harbor Freight. They have a nice uh, flat tip to them, so you can get really tight. Uh, they're sharp, like significantly sharp enough. Um, I don't do a whole lot of anything above like a 24 gauge, like 24 gauge is where I kind of max out. So they've lasted me for, I'm on like two months now. And been fantastic with those I can get in there and snip them pretty tight um, like I said nice deep well I like it when they groove out those bottom parts like they did on this um, down in here so it's actually deeper than where the like the positive ends up just gives you another little bit of extra juice capacity which is always good um, one weird thing about this guy. Okay, so you're doing, say you're going to do dual clothes. You're going to use the outsides. You line those up with this area. And clip it on. And then the single air hole is gone, right? Or it's covered up. But the way it's covered up is with these little protruding plates. These plates are what actually allows your basically just so everything isn't open all the time. And then it's going to be the same thing on the single airflow. So I'm going to line it up. And then you're blocking off your duels. But one thing that does hurt is that you basically have to do center builds on these. To be able to use the airflow properly, you're, gonna, you're basically going to have to use center builds, um, which is significantly not a problem for me, because otherwise it irritates me, but if you go off to the side, then you're going to end up with weird little gaps that are, I don't know, I guess if you wanted a little bit more airflow on that one side, that would help, but for me, that's just a little weird. Um, but like I said, I do, uh, center builds basically only, so it's not a big deal for me. And then I think that's about that, and we're going to wrap that part up, and I'm going to go up top, and we'll see you in a second. Oh yeah, I guess I'll show you these while we're down here. I made a couple... 2x24 humble wire fused with 36 lightning vape. Nothing terribly fancy, but just something nice. And they're all like oxidized already because I'm trying out a new step. Because when I do the giveaway, I want to give like potentially I'd like to send a couple extra coils with them. But personally, like setting up the you know, doing all the pulsing and everything and making sure they're firing properly. That to me is the hardest part of Clapton's and Fuse Clapton's and things of that nature because they have so many extra little bits of wire touching and I don't know, you get really bad hot spots. So my buddy Newt, um, Solid Vapor over on Instagram, if you're not following him, you should follow him. He does some really cool stuff and he's just a new, nice dude too. But uh, he suggested that pinch them together with a pair of pliers and hit them with a, a butane torch just light them up and it should make them so they're basically just ready to rock out out of the box so we're gonna try that and see how she goes all right see you up top all right so I was going to do the build on video but I don't know I just didn't I didn't have an angle that seemed right or anything so I just I threw it on 
um, did that little pulsing method and it worked, or did that torch method with the coils, worked fantastic. Like I barely had to do anything. I pulsed it, put a little bit, put a screwdriver back in it and twisted it around a little bit. Now they're coming out super nice and clean. Very nice. All right, so let's do some work. Um, like I said, the deck, you know, as weird as it looks, it's really not that hard to build on. It's not nearly as hard as it looks like it will be when you're first seeing it for the first time. Um, I left my leads pretty long and I ended up just installing them with the, you know, how it had the little grooves for blocking off the airflow. I did that, laid my screwdriver right down in the grooves, locked it all down. I left my leads a little bit longer than I usually do and it ended up working out perfect. I almost didn't even have to snip off anything. Um, I should have prepped this beforehand. So maybe I should redo this. But I'm gonna do the Scottish Wick method. Um, I got hooked on this method a long time ago. Well, I guess a long time in vape world, which is like three weeks. <laughs> but you take a little bit of cotton, stretch it out to the point where you can basically see through it, roll it up like you do you know, say cinnamon rolls or, you know, so it'll look like a Swiss cake roll or something along those lines. Till it's this big fluffy thing. And then I just kind of lightly put my hand on it and roll it and kind of roll and spread my fingers and it spreads it out into a nice even amount of wick. Take a vape. Then you got a nice tube. I have found with one sheet of this humble wick, by the way, some of my favorite stuff. Humble wick, it's what we use what we've been using at the shop for a long time now. And out of the dozen or so types of cotton I've tried. It still tends to be my favorite. Take a little chunk. I usually pull off a little bit on the end just so I can make sure that the end gets extra tight. Slide her in. And as you're pulling it through, I always give the back end a little bit of a twist and that helps kind of guide it in so it's not getting kind of caught and irritated. Right. Step that end. And then, like, one of the really nice things about doing this um, Scottish wick method is since you're rolling it up into all those, you know, into a tube, you're getting so many different layers wrapped over top of each other that it actually collects a lot more juice that way. And you can actually get, um, I can pack way more juice into these than um, I can pack into basically anything and any, any other wicking method I've tried. Um, for the most part I just kind of cut them off. You know I use a standard pair of scissors, lay that edge against my deck, snip them off and that's usually plenty because a lot of people get into the trouble of severely over wicking their atomizers and you really don't want to over wick them because what ends up happening is you end up not being able to use up most of the juice that's actually in the cotton because if it's packed in there um, it's got a really long way to travel to get all the way back up to the coils versus if it's just enough to come down and like touch the deck then you have enough to soak up any of the juice, but you don't have to worry about anything getting packed in there too deep. And when you're wicking, you don't want to like pack the cotton in there either. Like 
the fluffier you, you can leave it in there, generally the better it's going to absorb juice and the better it's going to transfer juice. What should we put on this? Um, no, that's what I'm going to take. How much spice down it do I have left? Yeah, let's put some of that on there. So we got in the shop, we got in the new glass flavor they're doing just for like holiday seasons. It's a like it's called spice donut. But it's supposed to be like a pumpkin spice donut. It's one of the best donut-y flavors I've ever tried. Um, when you are initially saturating Clapton coils, I will always suggest to slightly oversaturate them. Um, one thing I see a lot of our customers doing is that when they're dripping they're mainly focusing on the cotton and for all technical aspects you could vape it with these outer edges of the cotton completely dry as long as where the coils are stays wet due to the fact that the coils are what are getting hot they're producing the vapor and if it's not wet where they are it's just gonna burn up the cotton because I mean I guess some people probably still use silica, but basically everybody just uses cotton nowadays. And cotton will burn. If you've ever um, lit a cotton ball on fire, you know it doesn't take much. It just goes, Phew. So, let's throw that guy on there. And then I always light him up and kind of blow it off a little bit. And that helps break it in so you don't get nearly as much cotton paste at the beginning and you get like more right to your flavor because that's why we do this all right line up your air holes with your coils I guess I could have put this back together let's do let's do two of them We'll do two airflow holes on the top. Make sure to line those up over top of the coil. Right now I am at 70.7 watts, random, on the DNA 200 below. Let's see what she does. Super nice. I over dripped the crap out of this when I was priming it. Paper towels. Vapor's best friend. You know what? We're at 0.13 with six wraps of that 2x24 Humble. So let's do. Let's do 92.9. Good radio station out here in Utah. That is, that's where I'm talking about. All right, and then I did want to do one other thing. So in that giveaway, I'm giving away an indestructible that was donated by my the shop I work at at iVape. But another thing I'm really stoked about is that uh, my buddy. Uh, Nick is donating some caps, or at least one cap, I don't know. He said that he'd donate some stuff. So we're going to have a couple Still Chuck Innovation caps. I don't know if he's doing the point fours anymore, but if nothing else, we'll end up with some of the wider bore ones. I dropped it because this is a vape review and you have to drop things on the floor. But wide bore cap, there'll be at least one of those in this, and I'm so utterly stoked that this fits it. It's still, these are some of my favorite tops I've ever had. I've tried a lot of the aftermarket um, chuff caps, and the Still Chuck Innovation ones 
like I know he's my friend and all, but seriously, they're still some of my favorites. Flavor's really good out of it. Um, taking off the top and not using any of its like extra airflow is a little bit more in my realm of airflow management. These three, I don't know, two millimeter maybe. They look like they're probably about two millimeter. No. Let's go two and a half millimeter, three two and a half millimeter air holes on a 0.13 build at 92 watts. Very nice. So that was my little preview review of the indestructible Addy. Hopefully I'll be back in a couple weeks and give you an update on it. Um, Comment below. You can follow me on Instagram if you want a chance to win this. It's the same username. It's small c, big M, A R S H A double L, big G O, C Marshall Go. Hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe.